Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green toolbox deck featuring Vivian on the hunt, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 6-mana Planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty and can just minus 1 to generate a 4-4 Rhino Warrior token. We can also plus 2 and then we may sacrifice a creature if we do search our library for a creature card with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrificed creature's mana value and put it straight onto the battlefield, so reminiscent of Birthing Pod. And then we can also plus one, milling five cards, putting any number of creature cards milled this way into our hand. So Vivian wants us to play a ton of creatures, so the plus one is more likely to hit. And then we also want to include some one-offs that ideally have an enter the battlefield ability that we can chain together using the plus two ability. So that's exactly what we've done here, starting out with our one drops where we have Neverwinter Dried giving us a little bit of ramp and a one-off copy of Eye Twitch, which we also don't mind sacrificing, letting us learn one of our seven sideboard lessons, including environmental sciences, necrotic fumes, basic conjuration, also great in any creature-heavy deck, Containment Breach to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Pass Summoning, Mascot Exhibition and Confront a Past can also get back Vivian from the Graveyard. At 2 mana we've got some discard creatures with Acquisitions Expert and Elder Fang Disciple, so you can play these early and then sacrificing them is also good value with Vivian. We've got Priest of the Haunted Edge to go with our Snowlands. If we take a look at our mana base we've got mostly Snowlands outside of one Lair of the Hydra and one Hive of the Eye Tyrant as creature lands, and the main reason is because we're also playing three copies of Blood on the Snow as our main catch-up mechanism that can also get back creatures and planeswalkers from our graveyard. And then Priest a nice removal spell on a stick, and then we've got one Jukai Visionary which can also be great in the late game, allowing us to get back a whole bunch of cards from our graveyard thanks to the channel ability, and can also help us ramp. Then at 3 mana we have Skullport Merchant to go with some of the small sacrifice themes in the deck, also plays well with Blitz creatures as we can play them and then sacrifice them to Merchant to essentially draw 2 cards, and one of those is a Night Clubber coming down giving all creatures minus 1 minus 1, shines against the white aggressive decks where there's a ton of 1 toughness creatures. Augur of Autumn can provide card advantage by letting us play lands and eventually creatures of the top if we can enable Coven, and with the 1 of Nature of the deck we can often enable Coven pretty easily. We've got Topiary Stomper which helps us ramp, also a creature we can eventually sacrifice or put to good use. And at 4 mana we have a one of Spirit of the Elder Guard, which ties into our snow theme, can become a pretty large threat and provides a nice ETB effect finding a land. And Gnarl Professor lets us learn when it enters, so also plays with our sideboard lessons. And then we also have the full set of Binding the Old Gods as one of the few non-creature cards in the deck, just because it's so powerful and flexible, destroying a non-land permanent when it enters the battlefield, and eventually finding an extra forest as well, can also find our Woodland Chasm as a Swamp Forest that also counts as a Snow Source, and a one of Meat Hook Massacre as an extra sweeper to complement Blood on the Snow, and then at 5 mana we have the Midnight Sky, a 5-5 Flying Menace, and when it dies lets us choose between making the opponent discard 2 or potentially reanimating a creature, and we also have the Boundless Sky, which when it dies leaves behind a large spirit token equal to the number of lands we control, or can potentially find 3 lands as well. We've got Blossom Prancer, can find enchantments or creatures, or potentially gain life when it enters on a 4-4 reach, and Workshop Warchief also has excellent synergy with Vivian, especially thanks to Blitz, enters a battlefield gaining 3 life, with Blitz enters with haste, and when it dies it will leave behind a 4-4 token and draw card, so we can also potentially attack with it and then still sacrifice it to Vivian's plus 2 ability to find a 6-drop, still draw card of Blitz and generate a 4-4 token. And our 6-drops include Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 flyer that when it enters will tutor up 2 cards, opponent gets to choose one of them to put into our graveyard, the author into our hand. And then we also have Cemetery Desecrator, which is a nice removal effect, can also potentially remove loyalty counters of Planeswalkers when it enters the battlefield or dies. And then a Greater Tanuki is mostly a 3-drop to help us ramp thanks to Channel, and can also maybe get it back with our Blood on the Snow if we wipe the board on turn 6, which is quite powerful, and can also search it up as an extra 6-drop if needed. And our only 7-drop is Titan of Industry, a 7-7 Reach Trampler. When it enters we get to choose two modes between destroying an artifact or enchantment, gaining 5 life, making a 4-4 Rhino Warrior token, or putting a shield counter on a creature we control. 
and then our mana base has 26 lands total as we mentioned we've got all snow lands except for hive and our one-off lair of the hydra so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and our hand seems fine knife clubber especially effective against mono white and then a bit of ramp a bit of removal and eventually ramp Up against what could be a black mid-range or control deck, never mind, Grixis. Counter spells can be pretty tough. So hopefully we don't face too many of those. Opponent gets to draw to discard. So it could be a reanimator deck as well. In which case we might want to find our cemetery desecrator. So we can start exiling cards from their graveyard. But for now, attack, play Professor. So we hang on to our treasure. Can also pay for a Jory Disruption this way. And what do we want to get? Mascot Exhibition is reasonable. Yeah. Since we have Binding, getting more lands. So another Curve Stopper seems fine. Opponent has Maestro's Charm to take out Professor. Now the Midnight Sky has a nice target to get back from our graveyard as well. As our opponent keeps digging with Iteration. Okay. So it looks more like a control deck so far. But they might still have some reanimation elements. Get in for one. And I hope this resolves. Another indulgence. They have a 0, 2 and 3 mana card. So still missing 2 mana values to kind of level it up. Opponent's got 5 mana. Passes it back. Okay, let's uh, start by attacking again. Don't think we're blitzing Nightclubber. And then I don't think I want to tap out for Exhibition. Instead, I'll play Dryad and then we can sacrifice Dryad to Skullport Merchant. Alternatively, I could still blitz Nightclubber and then sacrifice it to Merchant just to draw two. And don't actually hate that idea. We missed out on two damage. But, uh... Wanted to see what our opponent was up to. Since it feels like we have enough pressure in play, if I tap out for exhibition, opponent wipes the board, I might regret it. And then do we want to play a Neverwinter Dryad? Sure. Opponent with a big score. So they've got a ton of mana to work with. Next turn we could blitz a Warchief as well and then maybe sack it to the Merchant to draw to. Opponent passes. So one potential concern here would be the Lobster flashing in, ambushing my Warchief. In which case I might want to keep Binding available. The Midnight Sky gets to attack regardless. Still kind of like Blitzing. And then we get to attack with probably the team and hope there's no lobster. Oh, it's gonna be Hagra mauling. Okay, so I can sack it to the merchants or I can sack Warchief to merchants, which kind of amounts to the same. So I guess we should sacrifice now. And then I can either make the opponent discard to or get back a creature 
and uh, getting back a professor seems slightly better. And we can learn once again how about a basic conjuration. Opponents at five. War Chief leaves behind a token, draws a card. Okay. So our opponent needs another sweeper here, which they probably have. Burn down the house. So still no target for binding. Do we want a mascot exhibition here? Yeah, and I guess we'll play around disruption. That works. Might see another sweeper next turn. The lack of creature lands is unfortunate here, but we only have two in the deck to make sure we have enough snow mana for Blood on the Snow and some of our other synergies. Maestro's Charm goes digging. So it probably means they either want to find a sweeper or already had one in hand. Shadow's Verdict would also clean up all these tokens. And there's an Arcane Bombardment. Well, a good target for binding, but might get to trigger first. Strangle takes out the 3-2. And what does Bombardment play for free? Indulgence drawing two. Not bad. Start by attacking, I guess. Opponent with a play with fire, triggering bombardments. Draw two more and find a Maestro's Charm killing my 4-4. Okay. So your opponent got a lot of value out of this enchantment. So, can Conjuration and then Binding to take care of it. And then, what do we like? Spirit, probably. Would love to find Vivian. Well, their opponent's hand is stacked, as we see another bombardment. And a wildfire. Trigger bombardments, plenty of basics to search up. Burn down the house can make some 1 1s. So that's gonna prevent our spirit from accomplishing anything. Get another forest, take out bombardments, and Blossom Prancer seems slightly better here. Find another binding, so we've got their next bombardment covered. Iteration, yeah, the opponent's deck has a lot of card advantage. They're at five, but... It's going to be tough to deal those last points, especially with those Devils on defense. Indulgence, 2 mana draw 2. Between Indulgence and Iteration, they're seeing a lot of cards. Cram Session, back up to 9. And yeah, this is slipping away. Opponent gets their own Mascot Exhibition. They probably have a strangle here. No need to let them use it. Okay, the visionary is actually pretty huge here. Getting back like a nightclubber can deal with all the devils. And a ton of other cards we can recycle. So how much mana are we working with here? 12. So X equals 5 on the visionary. Yeah, I think that's the play. Just pass, get back five cards, and uh, hope to outgrind our opponent somehow. It's gonna be difficult, but 
opponent probably doesn't have a ton of win conditions. And they are down to 21 cards in the library, so... We'll see. Opponent goes for a single block. If they double blocked, we could have assigned all four damage to the first devil as not to lose our prancer. Probably a play with fire here to finish it off. Prismari command instead. Well, at least channel is uncounterable, so that's nice. Mask on exhibition, that's fine. So Knight Clubber will deal with the Devils and the Inkling. X equals 5. Getting back. Knight Clubber, War Chief. Then probably Blossom Prancer, kind of liking Professor and Maskell Exhibition, Sculpted Merchant also an option to draw more cards, and then well, let's grab Professor maybe. Okay. Second place, Colport Merchant, Blitz, Knight Clubber, and then sacrifice it to draw two. Or we can try and get on the board a little bit more, as opposed to trying to draw as many cards as possible. 13 mana to work with. Yeah, still kind of like Merchant plus Clubber. And then we'll Blitz. And then if I blitz the war chief, we could still potentially uh, sacrifice one of the two creatures to merchants. Maybe get some damage in. Right, opponent sets up some blocks, so can let the damage happen, and then not use merchants, and then get rid of the opponent's creatures. Now yeah, that seems fine. Still get to draw. All right, opponent with indulgence drawing two again. Do I still want to let this happen, and then play eye twitch? Maybe, sure. Or we can leave up a merchant's ability to sacrifice a rhino if they try and kill it. Which is also fine. Okay. Zero points at seven. And yeah, now we've got quite a few cards in hand, so might be able to keep up with the opponent's card advantage. Binding in hand to deal with another bombardment. As your opponent keeps digging. Okay, so we do have a Burning Rune Demon, can find Vivian, plus maybe something else, like another Binding, or uh, another 2 for 1, like our 7 drop, which has a bit of built-in protection. Don't have any Blitz creatures left, I don't think, so step 1, probably attack, and then we want to try and use Merchant as much as possible, so we don't lose out on any extra cards. Prismari commands targeting our Rhino. Yeah, our opponent's down to 13 cards. Not sure if they have some combo finish that can one-hit KO us. Very much possible. But for now, we're gonna play the long game. And our opponent concedes, yeah. Managed to outgrind the Bombardment deck thanks to a timely Visionary. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Have tons of removal effects in hand, so hopefully we're up against a creature deck where we can put those to use. Opponent mono white so far. Turn to Valkyrie, so angels. Okay, so not the best matchup for cards like Meat Hook Massacre and Night Clubber since they tend to have a lot of toughness. But ramping into Blood on the Snows can be quite powerful. So, yeah, we'll play a Merchant here. And then next turn, we might play Professor. We can play Tapland to set up Blood on the Snow as we see a second Valkyrie. So our opponent off to a relatively slow start. Portable Hole deals with our treasure. Fair enough. Well, we can Binding, destroy a Valkyrie. That's probably okay. Get some more mana going. So we're not under too much pressure. So opponent's mono white, so we can expect some big six mana angels. Can get our dual land and play Professor. Could go for Mascot Exhibition, could go for Conjuration. Don't think Necrotic Fumes is necessary. So I'll grab an Exhibition and head for one. Getting a pass summoning to synergize with Merchant to draw more cards, also definitely an option. Creatures gain Death Touch, and probably fine to attack. Opponent could have a Wandering Emperor to exile Professor. That's one potential concern, but then we can sacrifice it to Skullport Merchant. Alternatively, we can just let it get exiled and play something else. But by sacrificing it, it also ends up in our graveyard for Blood on the Snow. And then... Could play a Night Clubber without Blitz. Sure. Just to get an extra body in play. Although Blitzing to draw cards... Also an option. So we've got double blood on the snow. Can wipe all creatures or maybe planeswalkers even as our opponent passes. So what's next? Could blitz a workshop war chief as well. Ideally we have leftover mana for merchant to sacrifice our blitz creature. But we've got so many expensive cards in hand, that is probably not needed. Alternatively, could just uh, Blood on the Snow, destroy Wandering Emperor, get back Professor. But I think we want to hang on to our Sweeper if possible. So we'll Blitz. And then we can send Merchant, Warchief at Emperor to take her out. That works. I still have much to learn. Draw a card, make a 4-4 Rhino. And be on our way. Opponent's got 8 mana here. Something like a Starnheim Unleashed could still be scary. But it's time to start applying a bit more pressure ourselves. The Rhino can attack. And see if there's another Emperor. Opponent chumps. So they might have their own sweeper here. But by playing Spirit, we still keep up one Merchant's activation. So that seems reasonable. Alternatively, can play Dryad and keep uh, three Skullport activations available. Because that chump block does kind of point towards a potential sweeper here. It's going to be a devastating mastery. So Merchant... Sacrifice Night Clubber draw card, sacrifice Rhino token, can sacrifice Dryad, get a land. So didn't really accomplish much, and then our hand is still very stacked 
to take over the late game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one dry, it can help us ramp. And then Meat Hook Massacre to catch us back up if we fall behind on board. Against a green deck with Sentinel. Should be quite effective. So we can soak up one damage potentially. And then we will need to get a little bit more black mana if we want to cast Meat Hook Massacre here. Innkeeper, so it looks like a Naya kind of treasure deck. Potentially playing with the uh, Showdown of the Skulls to refuel. Right, double Innkeeper. And Sentinel, so opponent's almost empty handed here. I think we still sacrifice Dryad in case we pick up a powerful 4-drop we want to play. And then we'll just go Dryad. Can sacrifice it again. And then a second Swamp lets us Massacre. Clean up the board nicely. Do we see a Showdown? It's going to be a Face Breaker instead. So that can generate more treasure, which turns into card advantage. Yeah, Swamp of the Top would be awesome here. So we can block. Get a forest. Opponent gets a treasure. And it's going to be a Cemetery Desecrator, which we cannot play at the moment, so... Priest can take out Phase Breaker next turn, which is not ideal, but hopefully can still mitigate how much card advantage it provides. Gala Greeters, another source of treasures. They might also be playing the Rhino if they can play Sacking Two Treasure Tokens. Going to be a wedding announcement instead. Well, this massacre keeps looking better and better. Opponent gets to draw, and a Titan of Industry we can actually play here. Okay, I guess that will have to stem the bleeding for now. Can destroy their wedding announcement and probably make a Rhino token. And Priest can take out Phase Breaker. And then Massacre can eventually clean up all their small stuff. Two cards left in hand, a Rabble Rousing, okay. That explains a lot as well. And our opponent will get to cast the card for free right away if they send the team. But they will lose a few creatures in the process. Binding, destroy Rabble Rousing, and that will eventually get a second Black Source as well. Okay, so we're hanging in there. Do I want to attack with Titan? If they play something like Jetmir... I could just be dead, so let's see, they would have six creatures, plus two power. Yeah, I think I have to stay back here. It's gonna be another Gala Greeters. That's fine. Opponent down to one card in hand. Spirits can also get a Swamp. So let's see, if we play this... Get a Swamp, and then I can Massacre for two. Yeah, that's perfect here. Could try and sneak in an attack first. So we don't shrink down our Titan. Think we should just Massacre for two. And then attack. Gain a ton of life back. Alright, so we finally managed to cast our Massacre, and our opponent concedes, understandably, about to take quite a beating, especially from Spirit, and we get to level up to Diamonds, awesome. Well, we have yet to see Vivian in action, but hopefully we'll get to soon. 
Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, probably go for Dryad over Eye Twitch so we can start ramping. We'll need another black source for Midnight Sky. Opponent with turn one Sentinel. There's our black source. So, yeah, we'll uh, pass it back. Sag Dryad get a forest. Next turn, Acquisitions Expert, perhaps, as we see Bard class. So, opponent on a legendary deck can take out Bard class with our Binding the Old Gods. If we draw one. And I could even Eye Twitch plus Expert now. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent's about to have a pretty explosive turn, thanks to Bard class and Sentinel. So we'll need some good draws. A Vivian off the top would do nicely. So level up Bard class. Can see all sorts of cheap legendaries, but her opponent passes, so no early play. And uh, yeah, could attack with a team. If they block Eye Twitch, I can get Containment Breach to destroy Bard class. And her opponent's very much aware of that. So Midnight Sky for now. And now is probably when we're about to get hit pretty hard. Instead our opponent with a second Bard class. Okay, another land off the top. Can attack. Don't think we need to leave Eye Twitch back just yet. And then hope to pick up some more action here. Also don't have any creature lands. Targonar enters with two counters. Partners, yeah, that one's gonna hit incredibly hard. Can give four counters and haste now. So maybe regretting not leaving back Eye Twitch. And Arlen. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a Blood on the Snow off the top now. Titan of Industry is not bad either. It's uh, only going to be a kind of a temporary solution. Midnight Sky could attack, finish off Arlen. Or can deal 5, put him to 8. And then Titan can deal with one of the enchantments as well. Maybe finishing off Arlen is our best bet here. The hunter becomes the hunter. And then play Titan. Taking out an enchantment and a 4-4 Rhino seems better than shield counter. So take out the leveled up Bard class. Okay. There's still partners, that's incredibly scary. But if we jump with Eye Twitch, we can get Necrotic Fumes to answer it. Opponent levels a Bard class once again. And the backup Arlen, fair enough. You wanna fight me and my pack? <laughs> now a Blood on the Snow. To wipe the board would be nice too, although Bard class can eventually provide quite a bit of card advantage with the final chapter. And the Snakeskin Veil pumping partners, so our opponent's going all in here. Five counters plus haste on Targnar. That attacks, so can just jump with Eye Twitch if we'd like. There's no trample. And what do we want to learn for? I'm guessing Necrotic Fumes deal with partners. Augur of Autumn. Can play that first. 
Hive. Can play free Dryads. And Necrotic Fumes. I think getting rid of Experts. Since Dryad can maybe shuffle the top, which is useful with Augur. Partner's gone. Still facing Targnar and a ton of creatures. But I think we hang back here. Arlen pluses. They can level up Bard class. Maybe next turn we can afford to take out Arlen. Alright, they've got another one. So the wolf tokens will enter with additional counters now, thanks to the previous Arlen. And opponent sends the team. Okay, so we can line up some blocks. Eat Sentinel. Eat a wolf. And then probably eat another wolf. Chump Targnar take seven. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Then we'll take our draw step and a war chief on top. Okay, we can play that thanks to Augur, and we could even blitz it if we'd like. And sure, why not? Right on top. Play a free forest. So Augur is popping off, and we can attack with war chief. Probably just face. And then Midnight Sky finish off Arlen. Or does that want to go face as well? Close call. I guess we just want to try and kill our opponent here. Ignore Arlen. And then I think we have enough back on defense. We can block a wolf, trade for a wolf, jump with Dryads. And hopefully that's enough. And we'll get another 4-4 four, four Rhino here too. Okay. Draw Professor. Swamp on top so I don't feel bad shuffling with the Dryad after jumping. So Arlen pluses, but her opponent is on empty. On my signal, the hunt begins. And attacks. And they seem dead on the way back here. Just need to make sure we don't put ourselves dead on board. Chump takes seven. Yeah, that looks good. Could double block as well, not that it matters. Targnar doubles its power. But no trample means no damage. And our opponent explodes, dead on the way back. Alright, that was scary for a second. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit slow to get on the board, but then it does have a nice sweeper and Vivian. Plus a little bit of ramp off Stomper, so we'll give it a shot. Dryad's perfect. So now we get to ramp pretty quickly can play my creature lands first, so don't have to miss a beat. Opponent on turn to Innkeeper. Green-white. And I would rather absorb one damage than maybe sneak in one point. Since our late game is looking good. Creature lands are potentially threatening. So a Stomper into a 6-drop. Sounds lovely. Can get another Swamp. And then if we're not under any pressure, we can play Vivian first. 
even potentially sacrificing Stomper, although gets exiled by Apparition. So now I don't mind Blood on the Snow, although Vivian just make a Rhino. Would leave Vivian at 3 loyalty, so they would have to sacrifice a Lair and spend their whole turn pressuring her, unless they also have a copy of Brutal Cathar, which could go after Vivian. So we could also plus one, find some creatures, and then if they activate Lair for three, they could still take her out. So maybe we should just blood on the snow here since we have a backup copy. And get back our Dryad as well. And get back a 3-3 three, three Illusion. And then our Vivian's going to be much safer now. Although then again, playing Vivian, having the opponent kill her, we can always get her back with Blood on the Snow, although we have two of our non-snow lands in play, so it would have taken a little bit longer to get there. Opponent did have Brutal Cathar, so glad I didn't go for Vivian, make a Rhino. And a wedding announcement. Okay. So, yeah, Vivian now seems fine. And then next turn we can Blood on the Snow get her back if necessary. And I could also plus, get a 2-drop, maybe make the opponent discard. I think just making a Rhino is better for now. Pass it back. Would rather have two blockers. So Lair turns on. Happy to trade, and then could trade again or could chump. How much do we care about keeping Vivian at a high loyalty? Can just plus two next turn after playing Midnight Sky, um, and then make the opponent discard their last two cards. I guess I'll draw one more from announcement. Yeah, that seems fine. And then Brutal Cathar transforms as well. Okay, Disciple could also make them discard, so we can completely empty them out. So, play Disciple. And then we can get a Cemetery Desecrator to take out Brutal Cathar, or the Werewolf. And make the opponent discard. And then exile. I guess there's probably no risk of them getting back their Planeswalkers. So Kaya is good enough. And kill Moonrage Brute. Okay, that worked out. Finally get to see Vivian in action. And certainly delivered here. Okay, run in seven, not bad. We have options. Could send some menacing creature lands at to run alongside the Desecrator to finish it off. Sculpture Merchant can get a 4-drop if we sack it, or we can get a 3-drop by sacking Disciple. And there's also Blood on the Snow as another option. And I guess if we kill Desecrator, I can kill Renan 7 as well by removing some loyalty counters. So... Maybe that's just the simple answer. And we return our dragon as well. Sure. So we'll destroy all creatures. Get back Midnight Sky, could also get back the very same Desecrator, but looping Midnight Sky and Desecrator seems fun. And then remove Brutal Cathar, or I guess at two loyalty, Innkeeper's enough. And then Vivian can still activate, could get another 6 drop. That sounds fun. 
Sacrifice Midnight Sky. Get Burning Rune Demon. Midnight Sky triggers. Get back Desecrator. And search up. Let's see. Titan of Industry. We probably want to keep in the deck to search up. So how about maybe a binding as a catch-all answer and could go for Blossom Prancer as just a nice two for one or War Chief to combine with our Skullport Merchants. And we get War Chief. And then I don't think there's a reason to remove the counters of festivity, but I'm going to do so anyway because it sounds fun. All right. Opponent is impressed. So they're at 19. Vivian can keep activating here and we've got a ton of more options. How about we Blitz Warchief? Attack with the team. And then after damage we can sacrifice our Blitz creature to Vivian, get another 6 drop. Oh yeah, the value train is real. Draw a card, make a 4-4. Four, four, and play Merchants, because why not? Well, we had to wait a while to eventually draw Vivian, but oh boy, is it worth it. GG's. And we can just turn the team sideways. Could sacrifice a 6-drop to get our Titan of Industry if we'd like. So yeah, it took us a while to finally see Vivian, but incredibly satisfying once we get to see it all in action. All these birthing pod chains, as they're known, getting to search up various one-off creatures gives you a ton of flexibility. So also keeps the deck interesting to play after a long time. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.